demonstrating. Monkey with a spanner. We're talking about, I'll do that again, it was a bit boring, wasn't it? Yeah, I'll do that one again. Hi, that's too exciting, that's too American. Uh, middle ground. Hello, welcome to Monkey with a Spanner. We're looking at the difference between mail and plate armor. Now, before we go any further, it's not chain mail. And I know some people are bored to tears of this anymore. It's, I explain, first of all, a chain by definition is one thing connected to something on one end and something on the other end. A line, a chain, a straight line, joined up events, chain of carbon atoms, a chain around a car park. Mail is not a chain. So this is not connected to this. This is not connected to this. It's this one is connected to this one, this one, this one, and this one. So at no point is this a chain. Therefore, it cannot be chain mail. It's either chain or mail. Now, all well and good. So this stuff here is relatively coarse. But this stuff here is much finer. Now, mail behaves like fabric in a lot of ways, but obviously it's metal. So the properties of it are that it's very good for filling gaps, first of all, but it's relatively comfortable and can form around your body quite easily. The benefits of mail over fabric are very simply, you can't cut it. It doesn't cut. However hard I try, I can't cut through this mail. So any slashing attacks with an edged weapon, this is very, very good protection against it. So how do we overcome mail? We're not going to be able to cut through it. Most of the weapons of the period, you can see first of all it has a very heavy back with a cutting edge and very fine point. So a thrusting attack, now I'm not going to do it because this stuff's expensive, especially the fine mail. By thrusting, you can see that point has actually come through. So the point is through. It might not be enough to kill somebody, but it hurts. With a powerful thrust, you may burst some of those rings open and force your way through to actually do some legitimate damage. This fine stuff is obviously better protection. The larger the rings, the less the protection provided. Simple, really. So, but this is cheaper, it's quicker and easier to make. It's less protection. More expensive and harder to make, more protection. You don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure that out. You? But that's with a thrusting point. So that's only with a rondelle dagger, which is designed for finding those little nooks. Uh, I'll talk about rondelles later. But if we're going to try and make a stabby hole through a piece of mail, and the dagger will do it, how much better would something like that be? That's got a lot more momentum just in the weapon itself. So thrusting like that is more likely to burst the rings just because it's got the momentum, but because it's quite blunt, quite crude at the end, it's, it's not going to go through very far. So it is more about power. However, we do have this curved spike here. Now I'm not going to talk too much about the weapon, but that curved spike delivered in a blow is going to provide a lot of power to your impact on the mail. And then we come into the second way to overcome mail, which is the percussive blow. So with a percussive blow, it may well, it may well dissipate the power of that blow, and you'll be wearing a padded garment underneath it. But simply the power of this landing on your body, maybe on your collarbone, that is going to hurt. So mail, combined with padding, not on its own, is extremely good protection. But it's still... It, oh, come on in, darling, bring us me tea. Come on, love. How patronising is that? Thank you very much. It's amazing. Cut the splosh. Cheers. Slonchivar. That was April. You're not going to hear me hey, done, well, It's Dan's here as well. Come in and say hello, Dan. Come on. It's all filming going on. Yeah. Monkey with a spanner. This is Dan. Dan is digging up the... Well, what are you doing, Dan? Well, I'm digging, uh, making the field flat and then putting in a new tilt rail. Glamour. Money and muck, mate. Money and muck. Where there's muck, there's brass. Where there's a monkey, there's a spanner. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be me then. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Dan does right. Dan's got his own armour now from Josh. That's come through now, isn't it? Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, it works really well. Have you had to wear it in the heat of battle yet? 
uh, yeah, I rode at um, Bolsover Castle this year and uh, won my first one, the first one, and then I, I was uh, runner up in the second one to Sean George. So, uh, well, I suppose if you're going to lose to someone, Sean's all right. Sean's <laughs> he's all right, all right yeah, to lose to, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. All right, well, at some point, we'll have a look at your armour then. Amazing. Good luck with the tilt yard. Thank you. Good luck with the filming. Yeah, cheers, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Cheers, Dad. Dan, I've never liked him. <laughs> <laughs> so, bit by bit, we start to develop larger and larger pieces of plate metal to accompany the mail and it starts to be increased in complexity subtlety of design so the thing about plate armor now this is a tacit this is one of dom's tacits now the plate has lots of ridges in it for one they look cool so why wouldn't you but another reason for having these is to deflect weapons in certain directions. So if something hits straight on, the tendency is for it to skate off the surface. Also these turned edges will catch a weapon. They're always turned from the outside inwards so that the blade will catch underneath it and the impact will be taken away, possibly even curling that piece out. Even if it goes over the top and carries on, we still have the mail in place. So the impact of that spiky weapon has been massively reduced. But it's also much better at resisting the percussive blow of something like a war hammer or a lance or any other blunt instrument. So this, especially if you combine with mail, then you are very, very well protected indeed. But because we are now dealing with a very complex system, we also have more complex ways of overcoming it. Now, unfortunately, this one got broke, so it's not on a stick anymore. But this one here, we have this curved spike, the straight spike, and it's on a long pole, and we have that hammer head. Many, many points on there, not just a flat carpenter's hammer. I'll talk about that when I talk about the weapons. But by having a weapon like this, it's possible to maybe, maybe, if you get the right angle, pierce that steel. But if somebody's wearing plate steel, why bother aiming for the steel? Why not aim where the steel isn't? So we use this long thin spike more accurately to push through where the steel isn't. But with the hammer here, we can deliver an incredible amount of power to the wearer of that armour, hopefully buckling it and concussing the person inside the armour. Now, one thing about armour, plate armour as opposed to male armour, it's difficult to make. So I have a couple of bits and pieces here. This one is just a piece of work in progress, a practice piece. I'm not making this, it's, I just found it in the workshop. But you can see there are lots and lots of hammer marks all over it. It's been heated up worked with a hammer and that is the way to do it so we've got a modern hammer here so literally heat it up and hit it but you've got to hit it onto something so we have a selection of stakes different shapes of things to put into your anvil to create different shapes in the armor so by using different stakes we can create different shapes in the armor combining these with knowledge with the heat and a judicious amount of violence, we can create really very complicated shapes. So I have here, for example, not finished, but ultimately, once finished properly, something like this may end up more like something like this. And even maybe something like this ultimately, which is a spaldler, which has an awful lot of articulation. Each plate is thought out carefully, all held together, or the tasks that we talked about earlier. So all these ridges, are there for a reason but it's difficult to do if you don't really have the raw material so raw material for the steel is equally important to the technology to be able to form it so which would you prefer <clears throat> good question isn't it none of them are going to stop a bullet so you know maybe none of them I don't know depends what you're facing doesn't it call that a day
you're looking at, Pink.